We had a great run, and a lot of people like to be in the second round, and we're in it, but that ain't good enough here so, for us. In the first round of the playoffs, the Blue Darters faced a similar foe, Evans High School. Similar because, just two weeks prior, a pop had beaten Evans 33-13. But beating a team once is not as easy as beating them twice, as a pop would soon find out. At this point in the season, the Blue Darters were healthy and had all of their starting seniors back on defense, resulting in a great display of the Apopka brand of run defense at times throughout the game. At other points, it was Evans' mistakes that were giving a pop the edge on defense. But even through their mistakes, they showed their explosive nature on multiple occasions just the first drive. Evans committed two penalties in a row, sending them back five yards apiece, and then a four-yard tackle for loss from Popka, but were still able to bring it to a third and seven, thanks to their quarterback. But that's where Evans' mistakes would begin to turn on them, as they would fumble again, this time being recovered by Apopka. But Apopka's first drive wouldn't result in points. In fact, it wouldn't result in much of anything at all. The Blue Darters' first drive was a short story with a three and out. Apopka had a TFL on first down, a small gain of three yards on second, and a completion for no gain on third, resulting in Apopka sending out their punt team quickly. Apopka's defense would punish the Trojans on their next drive. Evans' first play of their second drive was met at the line by Apopka's Antoine Robinson for no gain, and their second play is sent back for a loss of five yards from Robinson again. An incompletion on third down would lead to Evans punting from inside their own end zone. Antoine Robinson busts straight through the middle of the Trojans line and blocks the punt and recovers it for a blue darter touchdown. Apopka, then in the spirit of free points, chose to go for the two-point conversion out of their famous single wing, with Reggie McBride bringing in the two points for the blue darters. Evans and Apopka would go on to score two more times each. First, Evans answered with a rushing touchdown from their quarterback, Chris Peterson, where he beat two blue darters to the end zone. Then, Apopka with a rushing touchdown from their quarterback, Tyson Davison, who sped around the edge right up the middle. And again from Trojans, Chris Peterson from just past half field for a 41-yard rushing touchdown. And the last coming from Apopka's Jaden Safford, which left Apopka ahead one score to beat the Trojans 22-13. to Well, we found a way to win. That's about all I can say. I think, you know, any, I don't think anybody's going to be thinking we played great on either side of the ball, but... You know, we did what we had to do to win, so I'm proud of the kids. And we're going to have to uh, focus in and, and, and tighten a lot of things up to have an opportunity next week. Now in the second round of the playoffs, the Blue Darters prepare to face off against the Sanford Seminoles for another playoff deja vu moment as they had already faced off in the regular season. Unlike with the Trojans, Apopka lost 21-3 in one of their worst losses of the season in their regular season matchup with the Seminoles and now had a chance for redemption. You know, Seminole has more ability to throw football. They're skilled everywhere, you know, they're going to be better up front, the offensive line. They're, they're technically sound, scheme-wise, they, they're very consistent, so they do what they do and they do it well. Defensively, they're really stout. It's hard to beat a team twice. It was more difficult for us to beat Evans the second time than it was the first time. Um, hopefully, that'll be a point in our favor when we play at Seminole. Apopka started the game with the ball. 
and converted on first down with ease on a 15-yard completion to Noah Morgan after a 5-yard penalty from the Seminoles. After that, Apopka's offense stalled after being tackled behind the line for a loss of 6 yards. Then, Tyson Davison slipped, going down behind the line as he takes a step, giving Apopka another loss, this time for 5 yards. And then on third down, gaining just three yards on a rush from Davison, Apopka is forced to send out the punt team very early in this playoff game, with no other viable option, facing a fourth and 18. Sanford's first drive would foreshadow the game to come. Four plays, a four-play drive that turned into eight points for Sanford. This started with a tackle for loss from Apopka on the Seminoles' first play of the drive. Followed by Sanford's biggest play of the night a 66-yard completion over top of the sleeping Blue Darter secondary that brought them to the Apopka 15-yard line. Sanford then went with a rush on first down that went nowhere, but scored their first points of the game on a bubble pass to the left sideline where a Seminole maneuvered around multiple Blue Darters to find the end zone. Sanford felt hot and went for the two-point conversion, but went with a fake punt. The holder ran to the left sideline and was successful putting Sanford up 8-0 to zero after just four plays on offense. The game just got more and more out of hand as it went on, as Apopka's offense couldn't find its footing and went with a desperate fake punt that failed, giving Sanford the ball with good field position for a scoring drive. This time, a two-play drive led to Sanford's second points of the night. A 34-yard completion on first down put Sanford right at Apopka's four-yard line. Then, same as before, to complete the job, Sanford went with a bubble pass to the left sideline that secured the touchdown. Sanford completed the extra point and were up 15-0 in the first quarter. Sanford would go on to shut out the Blue Darters and score one more time before half, thanks to a 7-play 67-yard drive. What could have been an interception for Apopka to keep the game in reach rebounds into the hands of a Seminoles receiver who brings in the reception. The touchdown came from a 23-yard rush right up the middle, which put the Seminoles comfortably ahead of the Blue Darters, 21-0, after a successful extra point. We're in the playoffs, so swim and move on or, or you're done. The third quarter started with Sanford at their own 20-yard line, thanks to a touchback courtesy of Apopka's Hayden Kosicki. Sanford start their drive at the 20 and ended in the end zone after a 9-play, 80-yard drive. Sanford bounced from the pass to the run, keeping Apopka on their heels defensively as they converted play after play. The touchdown came from the feet of Sanford's quarterback, Carson Sicarios Lasky, on a 15-yard rushing touchdown, putting the Seminoles up 29-0 after securing the extra point. Apopka's next drive was their first scoring drive of the game and started out on their 20-yard line due to a touchback. Apopka's drive was methodical and focused on converting first downs, unlike the explosive chunk play-oriented offense Sanford had shown so far. But other than Apopka's more productive offense, the Sanford defense was starting to give away free yards due to unforced penalties. Tyson Davison also began rushing well in the second half, weaving his way upfield for a first down through the middle before sliding to evade a big hit. It would be Apopka's Reggie McBride who would bring in a 17-yard rush and barely get stopped before the end zone, bringing it down at the Sanford one-yard line. But even with such a great look on first and one, it took Apopka all four plays to get into the end zone after Davison wills a three-yard rushing touchdown securing Apopka's first points of the game, putting them behind Sanford 29-7 after the successful extra point. Apopka did well to stonewall Sanford on their next drive, getting in the backfield and stopping their run game on third and fourth down. This turnover gave Apopka the ball on Sanford's 42-yard line, an opportunity they turned into a conversion on first down, but couldn't come away with a score after they turned over the ball on a failed fourth and nine pass as the fourth quarter began.
Once again, the Seminoles turned the Apopka turnover of downs into a scoring drive with just two plays. Sanford stayed to the ground, almost grabbing a conversion on their first play of the drive. They go with a very similar play on second that breaks right through the heart of the Blue Darter defense, resulting in a 60-yard touchdown, which puts Sanford further ahead of the Blue Darters 36-7 after a successful extra point. Apopka and Sanford would go on to score one more time each before the end of regulation. Sanford with a two-play drive after a huge interception return that would put them on Apopka's 28-yard line. Sanford completed a 25-yard pass that brought them right to Apopka's end zone on the three-yard line. But Sanford's final points of the game were brought in from a three-yard rushing touchdown, putting them safely ahead of the Blue Darters, 42-7, after a failed fake extra point. Popka would score on their next drive that started with returning the Sanford kickoff to their own 39-yard line for great field position. In four plays, Popka was in the end zone after pushing through the Seminole defense on the ground for a 61-yard touchdown drive. Popka rushed for gains of 12, 6, and 5 yards, and of course, the 38-yard rushing touchdown coming from Apopka's Reggie McBride. I'm proud of our kids. We had a we had a solid season. You know, it didn't go as long as we would have liked it to. Uh, we didn't perform as well as we would have liked to tonight, but. Kids played hard. You know, this is a good football team. We got some deficiencies. We could have done a better job coaching, but I'm, I'm proud of them. Um, we got to play better on in all all facets. You know, it's just kind of we've had a great run, and a lot of people like to be in the second round. And we're in it, but that ain't good enough here for, for us.